We all know and love Yasna Cohen. She's known for being calm, collected, and in control. But is she all of the time? Some eagle-eyed readers may have put together the theory that Yasna may have been abused on an intimate level as a child. I'm gonna share some evidence that not only supports that theory, but I'm gonna to try to dive into who was the perpetrator of this abuse. Did they have an accomplice? And third, what was that mysterious sickness that Yasna went through as a child that nobody else seems to remember anything about? Uh, this theory contains spoilers for the Stormlight Archive through Oathbringer. So, in The Way of Kings, chapter 36, we have Shallan and Yasna's famous philosophy session where Yasna kills a group of men to prove a point on philosophy to Shallan. While justifying her actions, she says, besides, men like those, there was something in her voice, an edge Shallan had never heard before. What was done to you? Shallan wondered with horror, and who did it? Yasna clearly has no great love for men at this point, especially ones like those. Those being the ones that are willing to murder and kill and presumably take advantage of women. Now we know that Shallan is no stranger to abuse herself, and Shallan recognizes something in the way that Yasna is speaking that cues her in on something happened to this woman. Something happened. If you fast forward just a little bit to Words of Radiance, the first chapter, Yasna is setting up a marriage for Shallan and Adolin. It doesn't bother you at all, Yasna said, the idea of being beholden to another, particularly a man. It's not like I'm being sold into slavery, Shallan said with a laugh. No, I suppose not. Yasna shook herself, her poise returning. Again, we see that Yasna is not a fan of men, especially being beholden to them. But we also get a little insight into Yasna's character in those six words. Yasna shook herself, her poise returning. Something about the conversation of being beholden to another man brought Yasna out of her poise. The woman that we know for being calm and collected was shaken by the idea of being beholden to a man. Why? Based on what little we had known before about Yasna's character, she might dismiss it and look down on the idea of marriage, but something actually shook her, which suggests that there was some form of trauma in her backstory. Now we're gonna skip to Oathbringer and we're gonna answer that first question of who was the person that did this to Yasna? In Oathbringer chapter 53, Amaram, uh, upon hearing that Yasna survived and did not actually die at sea, barges in on her, Navani, and Shallan, and a bunch of other scribes, and insists that he wants to talk to her in private. Yasna refuses. After making several more attempts at her, Yasna only pushes him away more thoroughly. He eventually responds by saying, Why, Yasna? Why have you always denied me? This establishes that Amram was interested in Yasna as a child. He goes on to tell her that they were close as children, and she says just because her father wanted them to be close does not mean that there was any affection there. As the insults get worse and worse, Yasna insults his mother, and Amram gets very upset by this and says, If you weren't a woman, he's about to threaten her, and she responds saying, If I weren't a woman, I suspect we wouldn't be having this conversation. This seems to suggest that from Yasna's perspective, Amram is only interested in her for her feminine attributes. We already know that Yasna isn't really big on a lot of the feminine attributes such as music and art. Instead, she likes to focus more on scholarly pursuits. So if Yasna seems to think that the only thing attracting Amram to her is the fact that she's a woman, the only thing left if she doesn't pursue the talents of art and music and the other feminine attributes would have to be that she is a woman physically and that he's interested in her on a physical standpoint. I got a bad feeling about this. The argument gets so bad that Yasna summons her shard blade and threatens him if he will not leave the room. Now I know what you might be thinking. Well, Yasna clearly didn't like Amaram as an adult, but maybe they did have a fond past like Amaram suggested. Maybe they were close. Well... Not only does Yasna refute that in that conversation, but we also get some insight after Amaram storms out of the room. Shallan is just perfectly giddy by the fact that Yasna told off Amaram in such a spectacular fashion. Yasna wants to correct her and asks Navani to give them some privacy. After she does, it says, Navani nodded, her eyes lingering on the doorway where Amaram had exited. Once she pushed for a union between them, Yasna didn't blame her. The truth of Amaram was difficult to see, and had been even more so in the past when he'd been close to Yasna's father. This just shows that her feelings toward Amaram go clear back before Gavilar died. Now on a surface level, this whole interaction 
could seem like Yasin's being unreasonable. Someone from her childhood is trying to check up on her and asking about her health, and she does nothing but insult them and threaten them. Again, we know that Yasna is someone who is generally very cool and collected and has everything under control. So why would she lose control like this? This kind of outburst is something that she has always chided Shalon for doing, yet she's doing it herself. She's lost control of her emotions, and it's around Amorham. I think if there's anybody in the Cosmere who's taken advantage of Yasna, it's clearly got to be Amaran. But if that's the case, the second question becomes, did Amaran have an accomplice who helped him take advantage of Yasna? Well, let's rewind back to the Words of Radiance prologue, where it's Yasna's perspective of the night that King Gavilar died, and she has a conversation with her father. It's the last one of his life. Perhaps if you found pleasant associations, Gavilar said, you would enjoy the feasts. His eyes swung toward Amaran, whom he'd long fancied as a potential match for her. Sanderson here laying the groundwork in book two that Gavilar wants Amaram in the family. But Gary, that doesn't mean that he set Yasna up to be abused. Great, that brings me to my next quote in Oathbringer chapter 47. Yasna is talking to her friend, but something triggers her memory and pulls her out and she starts to reflect on her past. Something stirred deep within her, glimmers of a memory from a dark room, screaming her voice ragged, a childhood illness nobody else seemed to remember for all it had done to her. It had taught her that people she loved could still hurt her. Now, if you just take the first part of that paragraph, it sounds like she got sick, uh, started to act irrationally and scream, and they had to lock her up in a dark room to help her with the illness, right? It's that last sentence that makes me wonder. It had taught her that people who loved her could still hurt her. Well, we know that she doesn't love Amram. In fact, she detests him. So who hurt her that she loved? We know that Yasna isn't a particularly warm personality, and there aren't very many people that she allows to become close to her. As a young child, it's probably safe to say that that list extended to her mother, father, and maybe her brother, Elikar. So it's with this context where things start to fall into place. We know that Shalon's assessment of Yasna is that something happened to her and that someone did something to her. Then you take into the fact that she was locked in a room. It's probably safe to say that that's where something happened to her and she was screaming. Doesn't explicitly tell you, but you know that a loved one uh, is the one that put her in that situation. If we are right and Amaram is the most likely candidate to have abused Yasna in that situation, well, which loved one had the most motive to put Yasna in that situation with Amaram? Gavilar. He's the one that's been wanting this the whole time. If you move forward in that scene just a little bit, she's talking to her friend and her friend remarks that Yasna doesn't really have emotions, that she thinks like a spren, that she only lets the facts dictate her actions and what she's going to do. But here Yasna corrects her spren. You call me logical. It's untrue. As I let my passions rule me as much as many. At times of peace, however, my mind has always been the one thing I could rely upon. Except once. There was one time that Yasna's mind was not enough to help her. Considering that these two quotes happened on the same page, could it be referring back to that dark room? On top of all of that evidence, Dalinar has a flashback in Oathbringer where his son Adolin is born. Gavilar comes in and there's something wrong. Clearly Dalinar knows it. So Dalinar says to Gavilar, hey, what's going on? And he's like, I'll tell you later. I don't want to ruin the moment. But Dalinar says, no, now I need to know. If you don't tell me, you'll ruin the moment. So Gavilar is like, okay, come with me. So he pulls him out of the room and they go to another room. And Dalinar says, is it Yasna? And Gavilar says, oh, she's fine. She's just recovering from her sickness and she'll be right as rain soon. Now, the theory about that sickness is that it was a cover-up for what happened to Yasna. That essentially that what happened to Yasna was so traumatic that she was screaming her lungs out in that room that it left her completely broken for a long time and she had to build back the confidence that she was so broken in that moment that she could not be put in front of other people, that she was so traumatized by this experience that uh, Gavilar looked at her and said, we need to keep her away from interacting with other people. And they called it a sickness so that other people wouldn't come and talk to her because it might be contagious. Another possibility that I just thought of was that maybe Gavilar didn't set up Yasna, set up his daughter to have a traumatizing experience. Maybe Amaram did that on his own. But after the fact, 
uh, when Yasna went to tell her parents what happened because Gavilar was friends with Amaram, uh, Gavilar uh, swept it under the rug and potentially uh, that upset Yasna so badly that uh, in order to keep her from telling people or in order to keep people from asking questions on why she was acting so emotionally and erratically, uh, he locked her in a room. And that would fit very well with the callback to um, her being in a room screaming and being taught that someone that she loved could hurt her. Another theory that a friend of mine mentioned could have been possible was the fact that maybe Yasna got pregnant and the sickness was a cover up for that period of time while she had the baby. We know that Sanderson loves his reveals and the potential heir to a kingdom showing up in the second era of Stormlight could be something that he has planned. This whole thing is a really heavy topic. Thank you guys for watching and uh, let me know what you think of this theory. Let me know if you have a different theory than mine. You guys are awesome.